Yeah, and how the Jeff in general can assist countries. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Co-Facilitator. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chiz Aoki. I come from the GF Secretariat. And uh, thank you for inviting us to take part in the uh, long-term finance workshop. I was today uh, requested to talk about what we're doing to support the Gambia in terms of the climate finance. So I only have two slides. One is on what we're doing and sort of try to contextualize what Buba has currently said, as well as the TNA uh, further detail that uh, Sarah will present. And I have just one more slide that talks about how, what are the, some of the influencing models that we can take the idea into bankable proposals. So this is just a snapshot. Um, we, as we all know, the INDCs uh, of Gambia, with the Gambia was submitted in September 2015, and it had mitigation and adaptation elements. And under the mediation, it clearly articulated some of the sectoral uh, priorities that the Gambia would want to articulate. In addition to the unconditional uh, implementation that uh, the country has committed to do in two areas of afforestation and renewable energy. So um, items that the, the country identified as in need of finance and technical assistance and mitigation covered primarily agriculture, you can read this, energy and under energy there were five uh, subsectoral elements that clearly said that the country needs uh, financials and technical techni transfer support as well as transport and municipal waste management as for adaptation in the indc it clearly referred to the nap process as the articulation of longer term needs although uh, the gambia has already undertaken the napa process and even in the indc documentation it articulated some of the um the sectoral priorities that the country is hoping to address through the policy making um a process that we've already articulated so what was interesting in this particular INDC was that it also uh, identified 13 technology transfer needs. And it, it, it basically covered very nicely with the mitigation as well as the adaptation needs articulating the INDC. And transposing on the INDC is the TNA, which is a technology needs assessment. That's an ongoing work uh, that has been done um, between the Gambian government as well as uh, in the UN environment that the GF has been supporting. And under that, it is supposed to be um, articulating what are the technology transfer needs and what are the action plans? In other words, how do we come up with bankable proposals? And the process itself, I won't go into much detail because Sarah will talk about it. It's supposed to be integrated with uh, the priorities as well as the process for the what's identified in the INDCs as well as national policies. Clearly it covers mitigation and adaptation. So what has the Jeff been doing? We've been doing business uh, with, the Gam uh, with the Gambia for a long time. Uh, we've already have close to 50 projects in mitigation, adaptation, and land biodiversity. Uh, about quarter billion dollars of GF uh, support has gone into the Gambia. So we do have a rich uh, portfolio as well as experience working in the Gambia. What we have committed to do is that we will support the implementation of priorities identified in the NDCs and also the TNA process. The TNA process is ongoing, and that's supposed to do a little bit more deeper dive, I guess, into the mitigation as well as adaptation um, priorities identified. We have referenced that as well as the INDC priorities in what we call the National Portfolio Formulation Exercise. And that's a pr process where the Gambian government and stakeholders and the GEF would sit together and think about, given the GEF resources that would be made available within the current GF uh, period, which is 2014, 2018. How do we go about matching the priorities to the, the resources that's on the table? And already there is an, uh, a couple of ongoing projects that are clearly identified and aligned with the INDC. One is a C4 action agenda, and this is actually articulating the priorities related to cook stoves, renewable energy, energy efficiency, as well as stakeholder platform that would also engage the private sector. So that's already approved and it, under implementation. Um, another area is clearly for both mitigation and adaptation. What do we do about adapting agriculture? So that project has already been supported through the LECF. It's undergoing implementation. What's very much interesting is looking forward. There is um, 
significant amount of resources um, yet to be programmed in the Gambia. And uh, we already have a number of pending projects that's in the pipeline and technically approved. And uh, we have made sure that the GCF is already actually supporting another unit proposal on adaptation. And that's related to, um, I think, coastal areas and ecosystem-based adaptation. So that proposal and another multi-sectoral project that the Gambian uh, government has put forward again with UNEP, covering the ecosystem-based adaptation, land-based as well as sea-based, would uh, be uh, developed and implementing, implementing in synergy with the GCF. So these are the measures we're taking in terms of supporting the Gambian agenda. Uh, I'm Ali from um, IDB identified five areas, what are the challenges in terms of supporting uh, the financial needs? And she talked about um, elements related to alignment with national agenda, cross-sectoral engagement, institutional capacity. Again, this is element that we will identify. Um, how do we come up with uh, bankable proposals and budget constraints? Um, you know, different, ex different circumstances uh, of the countries um, articulate different needs. But generally speaking, we have a number of influencing models that could be translated to the project to address these priorities. One is we can support policy and regulatory environment uh, transformation. Another one is uh, working with the private sector to demonstrate innovative technologies and business models. And this is a case for the C4O implementation project that, uh, that will, uh, will be un um, implemented in the Gambia. Institutional capacity and decision-making process, very important. Each and every country would need continuous support for this. And um, finally, um, in order for the private sector or other domestic or even multilateral financing institutions to come in, a lot of times there is a policy or more importantly, financial risk associated with the projects and to, to make the projects bankable. And this is where the GF grants could be utilized to basically de-risk or make the uh, concessional financing more attractive for other entities to come into place. So I will stop right there. Thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. Thank you, Chiz. Um, thank you also for um, having stayed in the time. We heard what uh, the Jeff is, is, has been providing and 